Hello, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this stylized neon text effect. We're going to build it in a way that keeps our text live and you can use it with pretty much any font and it works with logos and icons too. Okay, in After Effects, I've already got my composition created and I've called it Neon Main. It's at 1920 by 1080 and at 25 frames per second. Now let's start off by creating some text. Okay, let's scale this up and we can center this. Okay, now we need to create some outlines from our text. I'm gonna show you a way to do it, which will allow us to keep our text live, which means we can easily change the text or font at a later date. So let's select our text and we'll go to our character settings and we'll make the fill black and let's select our stroke and we'll make this white and we'll set it to one pixel and just make sure that fill over stroke is selected. Okay, now let's pre-comp this and we'll call it text source pre and I'm actually going to pre-comp it again and we'll call this outlines pre. Okay, let's go into our outlines pre-comp and if I hide our background, you'll see that we have a black fill with a white outline. So we just want to get rid of this black fill and we can do that using Luma key. So select our text layer, go to effect, obsolete, Luma key and Luma key, depending on what we set here, will allow us to either key out the dark or bright areas of the layer and we just slowly increase the threshold until our black disappears. Now, if you zoom in, we see we have this black edge here and we can get rid of this by just going to effect, generate fill and just making it white. Now in order to make this outline a bit thicker to represent our neon tube, let's go and add a stroke. So layer styles, stroke, and we'll set the color to white and we can leave the size at three. Now a neon tube is never one continuous loop. So we need to cut into our outlines to give it an end and a start point. And we can do this using a mask. Select our text layer and select mask. And I found circle works best. And we just need to just draw a circle where we want the gap. And we set the mask to subject. And thanks to Texture Labs for highlighting this technique, because you'll see if I zoom in, because we've applied a stroke to our outline, it means when we cut into our outline, the stroke gives us this nice rounded cap. And then we just go through and add the mask to the other areas where we want our endpoints. Okay, now let's jump back to our Neon main comp. And before we add the glow, we're going to use the Refine Soft Matte effect to just soften up our edges, which will give a nicer result when we've got the glow. So go to Effect, Matte, Refine Soft Matte. Okay, and now if I reduce this edge radius to zero, we can see what's going on. And now if we bring this value back up, you'll see we get a nice fall off on our edges. And I found around three works well for this. And because this is a little bit sharp, we can increase the feather and it softens it all up. And then I found that if we set the shift edge to around minus 20, and we get this nice smooth looking tube. Let's fold that up. And now let's go to Effect, Stylize, Glow. And we're going to be stacking multiple glow effects and the first one we're just going to leave as default so let's fold that up and we'll duplicate this and for our second glow we'll just increase the glow radius to 60 and this will give a nice halo effect around our letters and we can fold this up and we'll duplicate it one more time and this time we'll increase the radius to around 260 and if i zoom out you'll see we've got a nice glow going on and finally, the last thing we're going to do before we add some color is to just add some variance to the intensity of the glow in our tube. And that will kind of mimic actual neon tubes where you sometimes get these sort of dimmer parts. And we're going to do that using rough and edges. And let's just bring this to above our refined soft map. And the first thing we need to change is the edge type from rough and to cut. And this will just basically stop any extra thickness being added to our tube now next let's reduce the edge sharpness and we'll just set this to zero so it's nice and soft and you'll see we're getting these dim spots now some of them are a bit too strong and there's a bit too much and we can reduce the strength and the amount of these areas by tweaking the border fractal influence and the scale so first let's just increase the scale to around 150 and then we just want to reduce the the amount of these by tweaking the fractal influence and we'll set this to around 0.25 and finally, we can tweak how much, how far we're cutting into our layers by chain, reducing the border. And something like that looks quite cool. And if you want to change where these are happening within layers, then you can go into evolution options and just change the random seed and you'll get them in different spots. 
but I quite like that. So let's go back. Okay, now let's add some color and we're gonna do that using color armor. So let's go to effect, color correction, color armor. And what color armor allows to do is allow us to select some input values. And for this, we're gonna select alpha and we can then assign some colors to these input values. And before we get into the colors, let's just make sure that we don't have this effect happening. So we can go to modify, deselect modify alpha and deselect composite over layer. Then we can go to the palette presets and a good base to start is ramp gray. And essentially this white point is going to be the color of our tubes. And if you select just to the right, we'll select our black and the black is gonna be the color of our glow. So let's just pick a nice blue and we get a nice blue glow. Now, depending on the look that you're going for, you may not want your tubes to be glowing bright white. So you can also add in a bit of color there. And if you want a bit more of a saturated glow around the letters, we can just select here on the color wheel and it will add a new point to our color wheel. And we can just bring this further around the cycle and you'll see that our glow gets more saturated. Just be careful not to take it too far or else this starts happening. So I found anything around here is, works well. Okay, so I think this is looking pretty nice. Now we do need to add some more glow to increase the light that's being cast off from our letters. But before we do that, let's just add in a background. So I have this nice wall texture from unsplash.com and we'll just scale this down a little bit. And, uh, rotate it, there we go. And we want our environment to be dark. So let's just make this darker. So we can do that by going to effect, color correction and tint. Let's swap the colors and then let's just tweak this white. So we've got like a nice dark, a nice dark gray. And then if we zoom in, you'll see we've got like a nice dark looking wall. And let's just call this background. And if we want to make it a little bit darker, we could also add a vignette. So let's add a, so let's create a adjustment layer, call it vignette. Let's just bring this above our background and go to effect stylize CC vignette and we can just increase that until we've just got a sort of central area where it's a bit lighter. Okay so to create the extra light that's being cast from our sign let's duplicate our neon layer and let's just call the top one neon and the bottom one we'll call fall off and I'm just going to remove all the effects from our fall off and let's just turn off neon and all we're going to do is just blur this so it looks like it's light that's being cast. So let's just go to effect blur and sharpen Fast box blur and you can just increase this quite high, do something like that. And we can turn on our neon again. And if we want to make it stronger, we can go to effect matte, simple choker. And if we drag this above our block fast box blur, and if we just choke this back, then we can increase the size of that glow. Then we can set the blending mode to add. Now, obviously this glow is still white. So, and we want it to match the color of our neon layer. And you could do this manually by adding a fill, but I found a nice way to do it that will automatically update depending on the color of our neon layer. So if we go to effect, color correction, color link, and what this will do, it will fill our layer based on the color of the layer that we define here. So let's select neon and we will select effects and masks. And you see we have a nice blue. And if we select stencil original alpha, then it turns our glow blue. And and the last thing we can do to our fall off glow is just tweak the scale of it. So that we have a bit more glow happening vertically rather than horizontally. So I'm not sure if it will come across once this is uploaded to YouTube. I'm noticing that there is some banding visible here. And one reason for this could be that the color depth of my project is currently set to 8 bits per channel. So if I click here and we can just change this to 16 bits per channel, it should smooth that banding out a little. And one last thing I'm going to do before I start animating this is just to jump into our neon settings just to make a couple of tweaks because this bit is looking a bit too strong and we can just reduce the fractal influence a little bit. Okay, so now to make the off version of our neon tubes, let's first duplicate our neon layer again and we'll just call this tubes off and let's just delete all the effects that we have on here first and we'll just drag this below on the on and fall off layers, but I'm just going to turn those off for now so we can see what's going on. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is add a fill and we'll just make this a dark gray. Then to give our tube the fall off effect again, let's add another refined soft matte. 
And after playing around, some settings that I found work well is setting the additional edge radius to 2. I can set the feather to 2 as well. And the contrast will increase to 25. And we'll just reduce the shift edge to minus 18. Okay, we can just hide this. And then next, let's go and add a emboss to give our tube some, some shading. And after some experimenting, I found that if we set the relief to 6 and the contrast to all the way to 700, we start getting this nice sort of shiny look. And then we can just change the direction so that our highlights are at the top. And finally, let's just reduce the opacity of this by setting blend with original to around 30. Okay, now to really make this shiny, we're going to add color armor again. And first off, let's just deselect, modify alpha and composite over layer. And we're going to leave the input phase as intensity. And then the output cycle, we're just going to go and select our ramp gray preset again. And this time I'm going to pull this white point to around nine o'clock. And then I'll add another point at the bottom and we'll just make this black. And then we'll add another point at around three o'clock and we'll make this white. And now we've got this nice shiny look. Let's increase this a little bit more. We can just increase the cycle repetitions to around 1.4. Okay, that's looking nice, maybe a little bit strong. So then we can knock it back a bit by setting the blend with original to around 40. Okay, this is looking quite nice now, if a little bit on the light side. So to darken it up, we can just add a curves effect. And let's just pick in the middle and bring our curve down and that will darken it up nicely. And finally, let's just add a quick drop shadow. And because we're not going to really see much of this drop shadow, uh, we don't need to spend a whole lot of time on this. So I'm just going to move the direction in a similar direction to our highlights and just increase the distance a little. And we can just increase the softness of the opacity. Okay, something like that will do. Okay, so now we can get into animating. And I'm just going to turn on our neon again and I'm going to turn everything else off. Because the way that our effect is built, if we were to change the opacity of our neon layer, we're going to get this horrible sort of faded look. And if we were to go into our text source layer and change the opacity here, our rough and edges and refined soft matte then gets affected by that change in opacity from our source. So what we need to do then is change the opacity of our outlines before we add on our glow and color armor effects. And the easiest way to do that is using the set matte effect. So first let's create a new solid. We make it white and we'll just set this as neon matte and we'll just bring this down to the bottom and we can just turn this off for now and so that we can see what we're doing let's just turn off our effects for our neon layer and on our neon layer let's go to channel set matte and we're going to drag this to below our refined set matte and we're going to set our matte as our neon matte and we select effects and masks now nothing's going to happen for now even if we change the opacity of our matte layer but if we were to add a mask on our matte layer so if we go into our mask and we play with the opacity of our mask you'll see that get this really nice effect where it looks like we're reducing the amount of power that's going through the neon sign and so we get this really nice dimmed glow look Okay, so let's animate this and at the start of our timeline, let's set the mass capacity to zero at a keyframe. And what I'm going to try and do is mimic the look of a neon light being turned on where it gets really bright briefly and then it settles down. So uh, say around 12 frames, let's set our mass capacity to 100 and then say 20 frames, we're just going to bring this down to, I don't know, say 80. So it'll reduce our intensity a little bit, but the effect will be quite nice. Okay, now it's a little bit slow, so let's select our keyframes and we'll add an easy ease. And let's just jump into the graph editor and we want our animation to start off slowly. And then peak and then fall off slowly. Okay, and then to add some of the traditional neon flicker. We're going to do that by adding a wiggle expression to our mass capacity. But so that we can keyframe the amount of wiggle, let's first add some slider controls to our neon mat. So go to effect, expression controls, slider control, and we'll call the first one flicker frequency. Let's duplicate this and call this flicker amount. Okay, and then on our mass capacity, let's all click the stopwatch and let's type in wiggle. 
open brackets. And so the first num value will be our frequency. So let's select the pick whip, select our flicker frequency slider amount there. Then let's add a comma and the next value will be our flicker amount. So again, select the pick whip and select our flicker amount slider. Okay, now nothing's going to happen because our flicker frequency and amount is set to zero. But if I set, say, the frequency to 50 and the amount to 50, let's play this back. Okay, and now we're getting some quite crazy flickering. And what we could do is now that we have these slider controls, we can animate this flicker. So we may want some quite a bit of flickering at the start. So let's add some keyframes. But maybe by the time our sign settles down, we really want to reduce the amount of flicker to say five. So it's very subtle. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And then if we want to animate this off, let's just go to four seconds, add a keyframe for our mass capacity. And usually neon signs when they turn off, it's quite instant. So we can just go a few frames and set the opacity to zero. And if we want to add a little bit of flicker before it turns off and we can add a keyframe for our flicker amount maybe we increase it a little bit to say 25 and then when we hit zero opacity here let's set to zero and we can just check what this looks like okay that looks pretty cool so now we have this set up for our main neon layer we can turn on our fall off and we can just simply go to our neon layer, copy our set matte effect, paste it onto our fall off and just drag it to the top of our effect stack and we can turn everything else back on. Uh, let's preview this. All right, and now this is all set up. It's really simple to just jump into the text source pre-comp and change your text. And if you wanna change your color, then you just need to go into your neon and you can either do that inside color armor or you could just go to effect color correction and add a hue saturation and you can just tweak the hue and because our fall off layer is referencing the color of our neon layer it all automatically adjusts and if you want to just tweak the brightness overall of your neon you can add a new adjustment layer and we'll go to effect color correction curves and you can just play around with the curves a little bit Okay. Okay, so there we go. I hope you found this useful. Hopefully now you've got the effect built, you'll be able to really play around with it, uh, create some really nice effects. Thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, then you might like my smooth motion trial effect tutorial.